Hello and welcome back to the Kendall Mountain YouTube channel on what is quite a grey and blustery day here in Kendall. Thankfully though, we're going to be taking you back to a sunnier day in 2022 when festival director Steve Scott sat down with the one and only Ray Mears. Um, so let's start with a, a sort of younger Ray. Where, where, where was that spark uh, lit, if you like? Where did, where did the passion for, for the outdoors start? I mean, that's, a, that's a, a, a long story in its own right. But when I was a, a small boy, I loved uh, being outdoors. I, when I, 50 years ago this Christmas, I was given a book on tracks. And I started tracking animals. And I wanted to stay out overnight. And one thing led to another. And uh, I went to a school where we had to do judo. It was a compulsory lesson. And the guy who taught judo had been behind the lines in Burma during the Second World War. And he was an amazing human being. And I, I'd said to him, you know, I want to camp out. And I, but I've got no equipment. And he says, you don't need equipment. This and was Kingsley, wasn't Kingsley, it? Kingsley, yeah. yeah. And, the, and, the, and the door opened there, really, for me. And um, I'm still learning how to do without now. <laughs> I guess... I guess judo brings a certain discipline from a young age, doesn't it? Which, you know, as a, as a skill set is a very useful, um, you know... Well, I think, I think judo is a great thing for young people to do. I think it's, it's a real leveller because uh, it teaches people to control their temper, uh, their, their aggression. Um, there's always somebody better. Um, it's a very special thing. And, and judo, uh, as a martial art, in its original concept, was one where the community helps to create a champion. Um, so it's, it's a very special thing. But there's a, there's, the way I was taught judo was very old-fashioned as well. So m the guy who taught me was taught by the man who brought judo to Britain, who's, who's Gunji Koizumi, um, who was taught by the man who started judo. So it was really old-fashioned mm. um, in its way of thinking and, and being very different to the sport that we have today. Um, and I feel very privileged to have had that experience, yeah. So, so did that did that progress to the scouting movement as a, as a young boy? Were you were you connected through through different organisations like that, or was it self exploratory? If you like, I, I joined the scouts, but they didn't do enough of what I wanted to do, and so I just went off to do my own thing instead. Right. And I've I've done a lot with the scouts, and I great, greatly believe in the scout organisation. In in the early 1980s. I worked for Operation Rally um, when we were setting up the selection process. And in, in, all the young people who came on, on that selection process who'd been in the Scouts, the Guides, Boys Brigade, Cadets, they all had a massive advantage. So these, all of these youth organisations play a tremendously important role in shaping and developing our young people. And I think every young, youngster should have the opportunity, whether they choose to, to exploit it or not is another thing, but they should all have an opportunity to do something outside of the normal curriculum that involves the outdoors. It's a very good way to find themselves. Absolutely. You see the, the sort of the growth of the forest schools, certainly from the, the Scandinavian models, the free lift sleeve um, ethos, if you like, where we, we're seeing that you know, grow, grow in popularity, although in the UK it's still not that prevalent, is it? I, I think that's true, but I don't... I, I, well, I, I love a lot of what's done in Scandinavia. I also like, I love a lot of what we do too. Mm. There's, um, I think we're very pragmatic, and I wouldn't want to uh, say that that model's the best for us. I think we have our own magic to bring to the outdoors. Yeah. There's, a, there's a gumption in Britain that's pretty special, and I wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't want us to lose that. It's a beautiful country. Mm. Um, so moving, moving on to Woodlaw, I know we're fast-tracking here a bit, but you know, when you started Woodlaw, was that, was that solo, a solo venture? Did you meet <laughs> like-minded people to say, right, OK, there is, a, there is a market, there is an audience for this sort of... Um, Learning, you know, if you like. Honestly, Steve, it was so long ago, I'm not sure I can remember. It was, it was, <laughs> we were born in the same year. Yeah, yeah, so next year it's 40 <laughs> years since I started Woodlaw, wow. so yeah, it's a long while. Um, it was, it, obviously, it was solo. Uh, I set up the business. I went to see a bank manager, and he laughed at me. And uh, that bank doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> 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 so... Um, and I've, I've kept it small, and we think small is beautiful, and we like to maintain a high standard. It's very difficult to do that. And uh, 40 years, um, hard work, but, but massively rewarding. I bet it is. Um, and having been a, a student of a, a sort of local woodcraft school and absolutely adoring it just from whittling, whittling things out of elm to learning how to cook on open fires... Apart from getting birch pollen allergy, which, which was a, 
you know, a, a really unfortunate thing where they had to cover me in uh, wet flannels for the whole evening, and I looked like, you know, something that was uh, scaring the children. But apart from that, I absolutely adored the connection, and you know, having having had that throughout my life, you know, through through scouting is is you know fantastic. So coming on to the educational side of it, if you like the. Uh, the skills learning. Um, this is a start of our little show we've put together on the on the slides. We've got an incredible screen here. So let's let's start looking through some of these images. So these are you just basically in your in your backyard, really. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for me, the wilderness is is what it's all about. And um, in wild places, you, you test your knowledge. You know, you can, you can sit in a, a woodcraft camp and you can do whatever you like. You can have 13 different axes, axes with you. You can have specialist tours. But when you make a real wilderness journey, you can't. You have to take one thing because there's not the room, space or weight uh, allowance for that. So it's, it's really testing. It teaches you an awful lot. Um, and I find in wilderness there's hope. There's hope that humanity can reconnect with nature. Uh, these these reserves, these preserves, these places that are still unspoiled, are tremendously important if we're going to teach people in the future to to regard nature uh, in the correct way. And um, I don't think there's anything more important than that, actually. Yeah, reading the book uh, We Are Nature, which came out last year, I mean, this, this really is about reconnection, which mm. is a very uh, common topic at the moment with the layers of technology that are clouding, clouding the you know, humanity in a way. And what, what I found fascinating with this book is you really go through the sort of sensory exploration of how we connect with nature, taking time, stepping back, and going through smell, touch, taste. Um, is that, is that something you find? Is there a transitional period where you go into these wild spaces and you find that there is a period of uh, sort of transition, like I said, where your senses just become... That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. And um, it's not just that, but you can actually... You, you, it's very important to sort of ground yourself. When I arrive in a wilderness place, for example, on a trip like that, that's a solo trip. Um, I've been dropped off by float plane. The last words of the pilot, you take care out there, you know, and yeah. then they fly and it's like, great, he's gone. And you can't smell the avgas anymore. It's important to take a moment to reattune yourself to being in the wild. Um, for me, that's just full of excitement. Um, for people who are not used to spending time in those places, it's actually one of fear. That's, that's quite normal. People are fearful of meeting a bear, and then they don't sleep very well the first night. The next night, they, they, they've worn out, and then they sleep, and on the third day, they do meet the bear. Um, <laughs> and and you're it, least expecting it, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of normal. But, um, yeah, no, you have to take a moment to ground yourself, to, to reach out and touch the soil and uh, to touch the water, to, to enjoy the fragrance of the trees. Mm. Um, I remember on that journey there, I, 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 my plane was diverted when I arrived at Toronto because there were lightning storms. We had to circle for hours, um, and eventually we were diverted to North Bay, and uh, they opened the doors. Um, there was no food or water left on the plane, and all I could smell were the, were, were the, the spruce trees, and I just wanted to get off, but I amazing. couldn't. You know, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Okay, so this is you in the middle of uh, some instruction. What's happening here? I'm teaching people, I can't remember, how to suspend things in the, in the forest. Oh, yeah. But te teaching in wilderness is the best teaching of all because I'm, I'm actually just, in, I'm, I'm just an intermediary between myself and, and nature, uh, between the students and nature. The, the, wild, the wilderness itself is the great teacher. And you can't ask for a better, better classroom than that. Um, I don't think these skills should be taught in a classroom. They should be taught outdoors. Um, that's really important. You love being on the water as well as on land. Um, mm. And I've loved the programs where you're crafting your canoes and, and <laughs> yeah. the paddles. And I guess, I guess again, that's that slow pace that, that is important to, to absorb the environment, to observe and Yeah, and slow learn. pace, but you know, sometimes I like to paddle fast too. You I might bet. be surprised. <laughs> um, I, I love being, uh, for me the canoe is really special because um, I like being on my own. I like to do solo trips. 
everyone tells you you shouldn't go outdoors on your own. I don't agree with that. Um, if you've got the ability and the knowledge of how to do, do that, you should go on your own and enjoy the magic that comes from, from that personal connection with nature. There's nothing more uplifting than being, you know, 100 miles from anywhere with just yourself and your knowledge. And in a canoe, I'm floating on the thing I love most, bushcraft. The canoe is a gift mm. of, of our ancestors. And you float there between the water and the wind. And you have to, you have to, to, um, you have to moderate the influence of the water and the wind to, to make progress. I love that. I love that experience. Um, I meet sometimes, I meet other solo travellers. And... Um, I never look for other solo travellers. In fact, I don't want to meet other solo travellers. But they sometimes search you out because they get to hear that you're there. Oh, right. And then you realise that not all of the people who go out on their own are suited to it because they arrive and they, they pull up alongside you and it's like meeting Ben Gunn. You know, they just won't stop talking. And you realise that they're, they're missing human company. But I never feel that. Right. To me, I'm surrounded by eagles and by loons. And I have a much closer relationship uh, to nature when I'm on my own. I, I love it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love also travelling with, with my wife and with friends yeah. and sharing those experiences. But. I find that quite... Well, I hope you enjoyed that snippet of conversation with Ray Mays. If you want to see more content like it, then make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, as well as also checking out the Kendall Mountain Player, where we have the full hour-long length interview with Ray Mays, as well as 400 different films and collections to choose from. Make sure to check it out in the link in the description below.